Mitchell's from the Department of Parliamentary Services there. More on that later in the show. Now, tonight on ABC TV, a new documentary goes behind the flashing lights and spinning reels to find out what makes poker machines so addictive. Let's take a look at Kaching Pokey Nation. <laughs> really boil down uh, why slot machines are such an addictive formula in their design. Really the key is that they're rapid. Uh, any addiction researcher will tell you that something called event frequency really matters for an addiction. On a contemporary slot machine you can play 1200 hands or spins an hour. So that is an incredibly high event frequency and when you take into account that you're isolated, no one's stopping you or breaking that up, uh, and that it's so seamless and continuous, you can understand why, why these devices are so compelling. It is solitary, like what I've read of opium dens where people are lying on little mattresses smoking opium, and they're alone, they're being soothed and comforted. It is a very strange addiction and it's pretty big in this country. Mm. With us now is Dr. Charles Livingston, a gambling researcher and public health expert, and Carolyn Hirsch, former Victorian MP, who's overcome her own gambling problem. Good morning and uh, welcome to you both. Good morning. Can Good I morning. start with you, um, Dr. Livingston? Uh, where did the idea for this program come from? Well, this uh, film was made by Neil Lawrence, who I think many people will know as a um, very successful ad man. He was behind Kevin 07. Yes. Um, and other political campaigns and um, he's always been interested in social justice and he came to understand that um, poker machines provide um, very significant harm to a lot of people, particularly people who are living under stress in disadvantaged circumstances and he wanted to do something about it so he did a lot of research and ended up making what I think is a really splendid film on the subject. Carolyn Hirsch, a lot of Victorian viewers would recall you as a, a prominent Victorian MP some years ago. Explain your problem with pokey addiction. Yeah, after my uh, daughter took her own life, I didn't ever seek help, didn't look for any help. I uh, looked after a granddaughter, got re-elected, probably by mistake, but um, I wasn't very well. And uh, I discovered them one day taken my granddaughter to school and coming home there's a big sign outside a pub saying free breakfast. Well, there isn't any such thing. I went in and little alcove, tea, coffee, you know, anything you like, jam, toast, papers and uh, there's great banks of poker machines and I watched. I used to go there most days after I dropped daughter, uh, granddaughter off because it was a long way mm. down to school. And uh, one day somebody went and won a lot of money and I thought I'll have a go. And, that was a very slow beginning. It took years before I actually realised I was actually addicted to these darn things. And what's really interesting, um, given that you, you are a, a former MP, is that both sides of politics in this state and indeed all around the country have, have almost sort of um, maintained a little code of silence about how useful um, gambling and, uh, is and casinos are to them in terms of their bottom line and money that comes in, mm. but also the social problems that come with them. This is sort of like a, an agreement that's been made across the aisle, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a, a silent agreement in that it's not called gambling. It's, oh, pokies aren't called gambling. They're called gaming. It's called entertainment, like going to the theatre. And uh, if you do become addicted, you, have, you are a problem gambler, a problem gambler, and it's your problem. It's um, not acknowledged that it is addictive. Charles, how hard is it for people like Carolyn who may even know they're addicted, know it's a bad thing, but just can't help but going back to the pokies? How hard is it to break the addiction? Well, it's a very tough addiction to break. I mean, the, the main problem with it is that it's, it operates in the same part of the brain that uh, cocaine addictions, for example, operate in. So if you think about how hard it is to break from a drug problem like that, well, poker machines do exactly the same thing and it has the same degree of difficulty in trying to overcome the problem. And the machines, of course, have been very carefully designed over the last hundred or more years to, to be as effective as possible at creating that addiction. I mean, Natasha Shul from MIT, who appears on the program, um, points out that they are perfect addiction machines and mm. have been carefully designed over a long period of time to do that. Given that it seems no one really takes any argument with that, mm. why is there no policy change in this country in well, approach? Well, I think 
as you said earlier, it's about the sort of bipartisan support for these things, and because state governments get three and a half billion dollars a year out of them in Victoria and New South Wales, both state treasuries receive a billion dollars a year from mm -hmm. that source of revenue. Now it's People who have pokey problems, people who use pokies are not particularly well organised. The pokey industry, the gambling industry, is incredibly well organised, mm -hmm. has enormous clout, huge financial resources and is very good at influencing government policy. And Carolyn, how, how can you help? How, how have you been helping people in your situation break free from their addictions? Well, for, to try and explain to people who are so ashamed, especially older women. There's this shame is encouraged by government terminology and by government saying, oh, you are a problem gambler, mm. rather than mm. you are addicted to these things because that's how they're made. And mm. tonight's documentary shows how they're made to addict. But mm. I think I was terribly ashamed. I, prominent person, I didn't tell anyone. I kept it a mm. deadly secret for some years. But now I think it's best if I come out and say to mainly older women too, they line up at the doors in mm. the morning when it's mm. opening, mm. don't be ashamed, go and look for help because it is an addiction and it is, they call it I think the crack cocaine of um, gambling yeah. and they're rigged. <laughs> Car Carolyn Hirsch and Charles Livingston, uh, good to talk to you about this this morning. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. And uh, the documentary Kaching airs tonight at half past nine on ABC TV. And remember, you could, if you need some help, you can always call Lifeline on 13 11 14 or Gambling Helpline on 1800 858 858.